part nine of hands-on big data we'll talk about R, the statistical software environment and big data. So we're going to discuss this in a few slides and then we're actually going to jump in and do some hands-on work. So as many of you probably are aware R is uh, the lead, I would call it the leading open source statistical programming platform and so if you're doing data analytics on big data R is a natural choice. So R in its original format was not designed to really handle big data and there are many uh, extensions and additional projects that have grown up around the R environment uh, that do things like work with files larger than what will fit in the memory of an, of an individual computer, enable parallel computation, other aspects of high performance computing. Uh, there's a link in the slides to the task views listing of all the packages, uh, or not all, but the leading packages that can help with many aspects, and there are many of these. Uh, we're not going to go into really all of that. We're just going to give you a flavor again. Um, we're going to talk about two projects primarily that are designed to work specifically with Hadoop type data on clusters. There's R Hadoop and there's Tessera. And Tessera we're, we're actually going to get in and demo. So R Hadoop is currently a collection of five packages uh, that are have been developed by Revolution Analytics. Revolution Analytics is a company that works with the open source R software to develop extensions that help uh, with high performance and large scale uh, data requirements. So the R Hadoop collection, you can read about it at the links, uh, is a few packages that help manage the files. So there's packages for dealing with the HBase data formats, HDFS formats, Avro format. Uh, those are things that you will not need that much or need just, you know, to, to pull things in and out of the R environment. The part that I'm going to talk about are the packages RMR and PlyMR. So RMR is an abbreviation for R MapReduce, uh, which lets you run a MapReduce type job in R. And again, thinking back to our original MapReduce code, it was, you know, very uh, programming oriented. And if we look at the example code that's uh, linked in the tutorial on the Revolution Analytics site, we can see that the R MapReduce, RMR, follows somewhat of the same structure, but puts the commands in more of a familiar R type syntax that's a little bit simpler. Um, again, I'm not really here to, to take you through specifics of the syntax, but when you look at these jobs, you can see there is a MapReduce step that uh, takes your existing data and maps it into the key value pairs that will help you then count up or perform operations on the data in the reduce step. And so there's some examples on the tutorial of how this works. Um, the code is structured like MapReduce, but it does not um, have all the complexity of setup that MapReduce does. Some of that is taken care of. So, you know, that's certainly a plus. That's a nice thing. Uh, even nicer, in my opinion, is the PlyMR package. Now, Plyer uh, is a very popular package for data manipulation in the R environment that makes some formerly tricky things simple. And PlyMR is an effort to simply extend those plier functions into, into a MapReduce framework. So if we look at the kinds of commands that run here, PlyMR has equivalents for standard sort of R operations, like selecting columns, binding columns together, uh, converting data frames via the melt and decast, uh, counting and extracting and, uh, and sampling your data are all here in pretty simple uh, syntax. Uh, but behind the scenes, the PlyMR is translating those into 
map reduce type jobs that will run on a cluster. Uh, and it almost completely hides the complexity of the cluster aspect. So uh, makes things very simple, especially if you are a plier user. So I just wanted to tout those efforts as part of the R Hadoop project. You can read more about them at the links. Uh, there are other R packages out there. There's a Spark R package that's um, relatively new, but lets you interface between Spark and R. Uh, there are packages that let you run Hive type commands in R, inter interface with Cassandra databases. R is very fast developing and these things will pop up. Uh, by the time you're watching this, there'll probably be a couple more that have popped up in the R space. Uh, there's a book, R for Cloud Computing, that's in my list of references uh, that you can consult for some more information about how these things work in practice. Uh, I had mentioned in the earlier session, uh, but I'll repeat it here since this is the R chunk, uh, that you can easily run R in the cloud using pre-built Amazon images. Um, you can install it yourself from scratch on the cloud to configure. Um, and we have some instructions linked here on how to do that for our Hadoop and uh, different environments. But the, the one that I'm really excited about is this uh, Lewis Aslitz uh, site that has links to pre-built images that you can just copy the reference and instantly uh, create a working R Studio. Uh, in the cloud. I'm not going to actually step through that here because the instructions are very complete. If you've already done the things that we've been doing so far, like running Amazon on the command line, uh, this is um, the same or easier than things that we've already done uh, in this demo. Okay, now we're going to move to our primary uh, example. And this is, I think, a very exciting new project. I think just for simplicity I'm going to break this into a separate video so that people who just want to look at the Tessera part can do that.